Good morning and happy Tuesday. This is Kurt Berglund with another Tuesday installment of what has Kurt learned this week or a demo or an unboxing. Today is week four of Sabretooth Baseball and we're kind of wrapping things up. This is part four of a four-part series. They're all on my channel under game demos and you can catch up on what you've missed if you would like to do so uh, i'm going to put the links for saber tooth in the description for this video uh, that you can click on and take a look at the website today i'm going to do two things first i'm going to clear up some confusion of mine that i hope didn't mislead you about how to play the game go through some stuff and then i'm going to tell you about Sabretooth upcoming releases that are on the way in the pipeline so to speak and that will do it for this week and then next week on tuesday uh, i have a new game to demo got a lot coming up in uh april for uh, demos focusing on um, 4th Street Baseball and a game that I have not yet uh, talked about, but I will be unboxing in another version of this show later today. It's a mystery unboxing of a baseball cards and dice game that I will also be demoing on Tuesdays in April and I think into May. So that's what's coming on my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you do so. I need your subscriptions. All right. And you'll also notice on my channel that I'm scheduling things ahead of time so that you kind of know what's coming a few days ahead in an effort to become even more user friendly. Because what am I really but user-friendly. Okay, so let's get to uh, the items to clarify on Sabretooth Baseball that I, my fault, I have made mistakes on. All right, the first topic is platoon checks. When you play Sabretooth Baseball, you're rolling four dice, three D10s plus the D6. If the D6 comes up, as the number four, then you know you have to do a platoon check. So you have to check and see the platoon advantage goes to the batter if the pitcher throws the opposite hand that the batter bats. The platoon advantage goes to the pitcher if he is the same handedness. We all know that by this point. Left versus left or right versus right. All right, so what you do is this. When the D6 is the four, you add the batter and pitcher's platoon numbers to get a total number. If the number is zero, you're balanced. This happened to us in last week's game. I think it was Duke Snyder at bat against Red Faber. Uh, if the player with the advantage already benefited from the original outcome, disregard the platoon check. Here's the, here's the example. Okay. So... We have Manny Mota of the 77 Dodgers up against Warren Brewster. So he bats right. Brewster throws right. So the advantage goes to Brewster because it's righty righty. Then you add these two numbers, they're plat or platoon number, two plus one is three. So in this example, Brewster has the advantage the platoon total is three, so you would look at the platoon chart with the pitcher having the advantage. And that gives us the number three. If you roll one to 54, you're gonna change the result. If you roll 55 to 100, there is no change. So let's try it. We rolled a 27. So what that does is it tells us that it falls under the change result number. So now we have to look at the change result chart. 
how do we change the result? All right. If the original result had Moda getting on base, then the platoon check comes into play. Roll 2d10 and consult the result under platoon 3. We did that. In this case, a roll of 1 to 54 would change the result in favor of Brewster, and a 55 to 100 roll would keep it as is. A walk would change to a K, a single would change to a ground out, a double would change to a fly out. If Moda hit an LG, then 25 feet would be deducted from the distance. All right, so let's suppose that here we are. Brewster has the platoon advantage. If the original result is a walk, because we got to change the result up here. So if the original result is a walk, it goes to a K strikeout. The original result is a single, and it's now a ground out. If it's a double, it goes to a flyout, and if Moda hit an LG, you subtract 25 feet from the distance. This is how platoon advantages or disadvantages come into play in Sabretooth. All right, so that is cleared up now. Item number two is the LG concept. I thought I had, but I guess I didn't. So, let's go through this. When the result on either card is an LG, here is the process to find the result. We will say that in this example, the LG came off of the batter's card. First thing you do is you consult your weather effects. Okay, you can plug that in on your score sheet. Now you look at the data on the batter and pitcher cards. Okay, so, uh, Baker of the 77 Dodgers is facing Reed of the 77 Phillies. Dusty Baker has an RP, he's in a right-handed batter, power three. Ron Reed has a power P of one, and an HR number of plus 10 feet. All of these on an LG is your information that you need. All right, so what happens? Well, you consult the LG chart to see where the ball was hit. And again, this is for Baker versus Reed. A new 2D10 roll produces a 46. Since Dusty Baker is an RP, the 46 shows the ball hit to left center field. Here's Baker's column, RP. 46 falls between 41 and 70, so we look over here, and sure enough, this is going to left center field. All right. So, how far does it go? Well, we're going to check the distance traveled on the LG chart. Get this under here so maybe it's easier to see. Okay. All right. Baker is a power three. Where did we get that? We got that from Baker's card right here. And Reed is a one. So it's a total of a P4. So this is our column. We combine the batter and the pitcher P numbers. Roll the first two D10. Consult the result under the P number to see how far the ball has traveled. All right, so here we go. Got my two D10s. The result is a 46. So, the 46 falls here between the 44 and 47. So now we look over here and it's gone 365 feet. Now, 
since it's going to left field, these are our weather effects for this game. We know it's going to left field and that's going to be plus 15 feet. So this is going to add to our calculation. If it was center field, it would be getting plus five feet, right field plus five feet. All right, so we come back here. We know it's 365 feet, but the wind is blowing out to left. So it's now up plus 15 to 380 feet. Now, we aren't quite done. Ron Reed's home run is a plus 10 feet. So now we're up to 390 feet on Baker's Drive to left center. Now we're going to look at the long hit chart. Now this varies, of course, by field. But we know we're in left center field. We know the hit's gone 390 feet because of our calculations previously. We know that the wall, uh, the location is 375 plus 15 for the, I'm sorry, 365, plus 15 for the weather, plus 10 for Reed, makes it a 390 foot blast. And if it clears 385, it's gone. And that clears the fence at Dodger Stadium in 1977. If, on the other hand, it would have been in Yankee Stadium, that would have been in Death Valley and it would have been caught for and out. So Sabretooth tracks the weather. Go through this here. Sabretooth includes the weather, the power of the pit of the hitter, the power of the pitcher and the impact of the pitcher's uh, deliveries to go deep. And it's all this combined. And that determines if you have an LG hit, where it goes and then how far it goes. I hope that clears that part up. All right. Now let's talk about upcoming releases. All right, so here's what's coming for Sabretooth Baseball in the rest of 2021 and then even into 2022. Um, the next project is a basic game version of the game and that will have 20 teams covering the span of 1959 to 1972. The basic game, the basic version of the game I have not yet demoed on my channel. You saw the advanced version. The basic version is a version that will go 30 to 50 minutes in length uh, of playing time. The second thing, and this is a 2021 release, and so is number two. Number two is an advanced game dead ball set. And of course, dead ball runs 1901 to uh, 1919 uh, in terms of the range of the years that will be in the set, of the teams that will be in the set. Uh, then in 2022, there will be a 1973 set. And there will be a 73 to 95 best team of the franchise set uh, that will include 26 teams uh, in that group. So the most recent expansion teams, uh, that would have been the Marlins, the Rockies, the Diamondbacks, and the Rays, 
won't be in there, but all the other 26 will for that 23 season span. Um, so there'll be one team from each franchise in that set. That's what's coming in 2021 and then in 2022 for Sabretooth. I do not work for Sabretooth. I do not profit from any of this. This is for your uh, edification, for your instruction, for your information, and to make you a better informed consumer. So um, I'm putting the links for the website for Sabretooth below. You can check those out. You've got the demos for my um, uh, four, my three previous demos of Sabretooth, and you can get a flavor of the game there as well. I'm posting this for Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon is a mystery game unboxing. So subscribe to my channel. Come on back for the mystery game unboxing, and we'll take a look at what I've received in the mail. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you have a good day. So long, everybody.